Thursday. If you don't know yet, I am Skylar with Lean Frontiers and I will be your host for today's webinar. If you do have any questions, please use the chat feature and we will get to them if there is time left at the end. Um, there will be a couple of questions throughout too, so make sure you are paying attention. There are a couple of surprises throughout as well. The webinar is being recorded, so please allow us 24 to 48 hours to process the link for the recording. So let me just take a moment to introduce our facilitator for today, Adam Lawrence. Adam is the managing partner of Process Improvement Partners, LLC. He has 30 years of experience in process improvement activities targeted at manufacturing and business processes. Having facilitated 300 plus Kaizen events in multiple industries around the world, Adam aligns with leadership, engages teams, and creates sustainable results. Adam enjoys time with family and friends, loud music, traveling, the many great clients he has worked with, his extended family, and his many business adventures. The Will of Sustainability is his first book. I'll hand it over to Adam. Well, thank you, Skylar. First of all, thanks to Lean Frontiers, and thank you all for joining. I'm really excited that you chose to join us. Um, I am going to share my screen so we can get started. And as Skylar said, would love to have you engage with us today, um, have some activities, questions, and a few surprises for prizes. So with that being said, let me take you into the next slide. So the first, first test of paying attention is please put in the chat name and location. Love to hear who joined us and where you're from. And, and if you have a few extra moments, what are you hoping to get out of this webinar? Okay, so give you about 10, 15 seconds. I will give an intro to me and then uh, we'll let Skylar uh, share some of, the, some of the names and the locations. So my name is Adam Lawrence, as Skylar said. Um, I have been working on my own for the past three years with just a bunch of great clients. And uh, you see this ninja, I like to think of myself as a bit of a Kaizen ninja. I think I've heard that that exists other places, but it's just fun to go in, be part of the team, partner up with, with groups, trying to solve critical problems. And then the reason why we're here today is to talk about how do we sustain those solutions? So I'm going to, I'm going to stop for a moment. You, you'll hear enough about me. And, and as Skylar said, I did write a book and you'll hear about that as well, but just curious Skylar. So give us some examples of uh, some names and locations and maybe even some expectations. My goodness, there's so many people from everywhere on here. We have um, a couple from Salt Lake City. Um, we have some from Ohio. We have some from um, California. We have a comment, always wanting to learn more about lean. Awesome. Um, any tips to help me engage others on my team? Great. Um, we have... Let's see, learn new ways to engage teams to keep from slipping to old habits. Okay. Um, oh, sustaining great. change and several others. We have some from Maine in here. Awesome. And other ways to engage others in my workshop. Fantastic. Well, thanks for that. Thank you all for typing in the chat. That's exciting from all the great locations. Okay, so what you hear hopefully about to hear about is the wheel of sustainability. So this is, this is the system that I built over many years to try to help teams sustain the results that they work so hard to achieve. And so the reason my why behind the wheel of sustainability is that I have been helping teams for years and years just solve problems. And it's always exciting when they do that and always frustrating when the problems would eventually come back. So I said, I made it my mission to figure out a way to help them sustain those solutions. So um, the image that you see is a wheel, uh, fairly simple. It has eight spokes and one hub. So if you think about it, a wheel is as strong as its components. So if I were to lose a spoke, the wheel would get weaker, but clearly the hub of leadership commitment is, is the wheel would fall apart without that. So my goal today is to help you understand all these components. I'm not going to describe each component on this slide because I'm going to go into each component individually on the next slides. And I will tell you that 
we're going to take a question break at each component so you can we can dig a little deeper because certainly 45 minutes isn't enough but i would encourage you you know if you if there's something you find interesting in this discussion you know to reach out to me you know during after read the book whatever you need to do to that that will help you and your team sustain their results because i learned that sustain is a topic that sounds great but it's not as easy as as it appears I believe the wheel makes it a bit easier. So I hope you'll find the same. All right. So I told you the strongest component, the most important component is in the center. That's leadership commitment. So let's talk about that first. So what does that mean? Well, leadership commitment to me means that leaders are doing everything in their power to assure that the team has a winning experience, that the people have a winning experience. So to do that, they have to, well, one, understand all those components of the wheel sustainability and, and commit to supporting each, each of those components. They have to be visible. They have to be supportive. They have to want to have their team have a winning experience. And I know that sounds obvious, but it's not always so obvious. So how do we see that? How do we test that? How do I test for leadership commitment? Well, one of the key ways I do that is through chartering. So if a team is going to solve a problem or attempt to solve a problem, the first thing I want to understand with leaders is what is that problem that we're trying to solve? Help us understand the impact on your people, the impact on the company, and the impact on your customers. Now, most of us would say customer first, absolutely. But our teams are our people, and we influence their ability to, to create a solution that the customer will see. So a clear problem statement is so critical. And it seems so obvious, but very few people are good at it. So I have been told that chartering is difficult, but what we've learned to do is turn things into actual business, business problem descriptions rather than vague. Okay, once I know the problem that we're trying to solve now, what are the objectives? So what would the team see that would tell them that they've accomplished their mission? What are the clear and measurable objectives? So in a factory that might be changeover currently takes two hours. The objective in this Kaizen event would be to reduce it in half to one hour. Um, we have 300 safety issues that we've identified in this area. By the end of this session, we want to be able to eliminate a hundred of them. So clear and measurable, the team can say, did we win or did we not win? What would they see? And these objectives, of course, have to be challenging. Now, the leaders, they don't know how to solve it. If they did, they would have solved it. So they're really relying on their team to do this. So this is a contract. When we write the charter, we're telling the team, here's what we're trying to solve. Here's what would tell you you've solved it. But now we're going to let you figure out how to do it. Now you might self-facilitate, you might bring in outside facilitation, but we're gonna be supportive to you. We're gonna give you the time you need. We're not gonna shortcut. We're not gonna take you out of these sessions for meetings. We're gonna give you everything you need. And if you say, I need these specific tools, we're gonna to say yes. So then the third component of chartering is building that winning team. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is picking people that actually feel the pain of the problem people that care about the problem, people that are customers of the problem and people that are suppliers of the, of the problem. So getting the proper coverage, giving people the time to, to be part of this solution, giving them the autonomy and the authority and the ownership to, to build and create that solution. And then finally, the fourth part of chartering is, is identifying when it's over, who owns the output. Who is the person that's going to have to make sure all these great ideas actually, even though they've been implemented, they stay implemented, that we communicate and we discuss and we're training properly and we're doing all these other elements. The owner of the output. So my rule is the owner of the output should be the team leader because that team leader, she or he is not going to allow the team to do something that they can't live with. So very critical. So when we charter, that's a test of leadership commitment because they have to be able to say, we know our problem. Here are clear, challenging objectives. We're willing to provide the winning team. 
and we're going to put somebody in place to assure that everything stays sustainable from the time the session or project is over ad infinitum. Okay, so that's the test of leadership commitment. There's a lot more to it, of course, than that. So I'm going to stop for questions. Uh, if you got a question or two in the chat, please let us know. I'll let Skylar uh, take a look and see if anybody asked any questions. And we'll see how that goes. Give it about 10 to 15 seconds. We have one, it says, how do we influence leadership to provide the commitment to sustain the effort? Right, great question. So the next slides are gonna help you with that. So my simple answer is providing the image of the wheel, which I'll do for you in the next slides, shows them what, what their requirement, what their commitment needs to be for each element. So a lot of times when I'm meeting leadership teams for the first time, I'm presenting the wheel to them and I'm actually watching to see how they engage with it, the questions they ask about it, and if they have a willingness to provide support around all of those elements. Excellent question. Any others before I move on? Uh, that is it. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so the first element starts at 12 o'clock on the wheel and it's called notification. So what this is, is when a team has made a change, made an improvement, how do we communicate? Who is communicating and what are we communicating? So the key is people, understand what we're doing. What they really want to know is why we're doing it. So the first test of that leadership, leadership commitment is how we communicate the change, the expectation, why it's so important. Is it aligned with our vision? Is it compelling? Are we talking about what or are we talking about why? So how you describe the change and how you set the tone, the people in the audience, if it's a big audience, small audience, Will they engage with you? Will you engage with them? They're looking you in your eyes to see if you're really, if you're really aligned with this. Because if you're not, they're gonna know it. So that is a true test. It's a very simple test. But if you've ever sat through large room meetings, if the message isn't compelling, people are distracted. They're playing with their smartphones. They're talking to their neighbor. So. Clearly, notification is a, is a critical step to start engaging with the message of change. Okay, so with that, I'm going to stop and again, for this first element, allow time for a, a question or two. Okay, Skylar, any, anybody chat in a question? Nothing yet. Okay, well, we're gonna move on then because I know that there are seven more elements and a little more, a little, a few, a few more question opportunities. Okay. Okay, all right. So the next element is called training and review. So the idea is, okay, we've told a broad audience in many different ways, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Now we're actually, going to be speaking with and teaching and training and holding accountable the people that actually have to use, implement, deal with the change. So training and review to me is all about that one-to-one -one engagement, talking with people individually, demonstrating the change. In very simplistic terms, I call it tell, show, do. I'm going to tell you about the change. I'm gonna show you how to do the change and then I'm gonna have you demonstrate it to me. So that's very simple. In extreme terms, although I don't feel it's extreme, but if you're not as familiar with it, training within industry teaches a really fantastic method for doing the exact same thing, but in a very disciplined way. What's really nice about Tell, Show, Do, and then in the extreme training within industry, is it's an almost impossible not to engage and really understand if the person that you're talking with understands and will support the change. And it's easy to audit. And there's nowhere to hide when it's just you and I speaking to each other. When you demonstrate your, your knowledge of it, 
there's no way to gloss over what's going on. And then I can help address and assess the issues or problems or misalignments that we might have. And it creates a comfort level and a belief that we actually care about each other when we're taking that extra time one-on-one. -on -one. So this is not crew meeting. This is not PowerPoint like we're doing now. This is just the two of us talking. And if two other people want to know more, well, we're going to work with each person individually. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and see if there are any questions or thoughts around that. Now understand again, what's the leadership commitment side to this? The ability to take time one person at a time to allow them to engage with us and really understand what the change is and how it impacts them and what their thoughts and input might be to it. And um, we okay. have a question. It says, what tool or activity do you use to help with this? I'm sorry, ask the question again. I missed the first part. What tool or activity do you use to help with this? Okay, so great question. So there are many ways to do it. First of all, it could just be the two of us speaking, right? So let's start with tell, show, do. So I am going to move the printer and I'm going to store paper for the printer in a different way. So instead of giving you a document that says where everything is, I'm going to take you over to the printer. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you why I believe it's better for you this way. I'm going to ask you what you think about it. And then I'm going to have you describe it to me. So that's, that's a very simple, a simple approach, right? Tell, show, do. Um, again, in the extreme standpoint, and I would say anybody that's more interested about training within industry, I can definitely give you more information about that. I'm sure Lean Frontiers and there's great, great detail out there, but there's a very disciplined approach of how I deliver new information to you in a way that it'll be meaningful, memorable, and a way that you will remember it and be able to return it to me so that I can assess and audit that you actually know the right thing to do from here on out. And what we're trying to do is teach people the best, safest, most productive, stress-free way to do something. So you have to be very strategic and about what you're going to use these techniques with, especially in the early stages, because this takes some effort, as you might expect. Okay. Um, we, have a, we have a couple more. Um, any concerns with variation in messaging with individual training sessions versus group? It's a great question. So messaging gets lost in groups, even though I may say the same thing to in front of 40 people, those 40 people may interpret it uh, differently. So when we think of training within industry, there are job instructions. The messaging is in the job instruction. So how we message is totally dependent on how it's written. So the messaging stays the same. When we're training people using that method, they're repeating it and demonstrating it exactly as written. We are actually training them exactly to the method. So the messaging actually becomes very well aligned, uh, disciplined, and consistent. Um, when we do tell, show, do, clearly, Skylar is going to train slightly differently than Adam's going to train, but, but the why is what matters, not the what. The what matters too, but if we understand why, even when we might make a slight error, if we're, if we're working towards the why, the results should still be quite positive. Anything okay, else? We have, yeah, we have three more. This one says, how might you suggest doing this with a large change that affects a lot of people where one-to-one -one might not be realistic? Okay, so the way we do that is we actually uptrain multiple folks. So when I have a Kaizen team, for example, let's say anywhere from three to 15 people, all 15 can deliver the message. So that is one way to accelerate because they were there and they built the change. So I've done that many times. Uh, they know why they did it. They have the message. We create some standard work for them and then they can go out and do it. So even very large changes can be efficient. And, and it's worth the investment in my opinion. Uh, if you're gonna do 10,000 people, okay, that's, that's a whole different ball game. And I haven't had to do it like that. So, you know, I don't think I'm the one to, to try to explain that. Another one 
how do you do this when we only have online interactions in faraway locations? Ah, great. Well, there's no reason that Zoom can't work. You can look at somebody in the face no matter where they are. Uh, so you have to take that opportunity again and, you know, divide and conquer. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but, you know, I think it, I think it can work. I've seen it work. Uh, definitely keep your video on, right? Uh, some companies don't keep their video on. You got to keep your video on or you don't know that they're even engaging. Okay, I think we have time for one more question, then we're going to have to move on, I think. Okay, we have, would you recommend to start with tell, show, do, and then transition to more detailed TWI? Oh, absolutely. So TWI, the commitment, I'm, I'm helping a company right now roll out TWI. And um, until about, oh, I'd say no, October of last year, I wasn't that familiar. It's a fantastic approach, amazingly effective, but hugely, huge commitment. For 30 years before that, I was doing tell, show, do, and, and, we're, and we're sustaining results. This is an issue. TWI is fantastic when you really have big issues from crew to crew, shift to shift, person to person. Everybody's doing it their own way, and you really want to drive productivity um, without investing a lot of capital. Okay? So I think maybe we're going to have to save the next queue for maybe the next slide if we don't get any other questions on it. Okay. Is that, is that fair? Fair. I'm just watching the time. I could, you know, you guys probably, those that know me, <laughs> I could talk about this stuff all day. Okay. So I decided that we're going to have prizes. So a few of you who know me know that I wrote a book because I had some time on my hands and I love giving them away. So in the chat, so I don't know if you can see the book because I can't see me anymore. So Skylar, you tell me too far. You're too good. Close. Okay, good. Okay, cool. So I want to give one away. <laughs> so in the chat, whoever gets closest to the number, how many distinct stories did I write in the book? So I use stories to illustrate uh, all of the elements of the wheel, but how many distinct stories? So type in a number and I'm going to give you about 15 seconds to type in numbers. And when Skylar, I'll give you, a, I'll count in my head to 15. And then um, I can't see the chats, only Skylar can. I'll tell you what the number is and then she can, she can tell us who won. Okay, so five more seconds. Okay. You go, okay, yeah, good. I, I don't have the Jeopardy theme song. I'd love to do that. Uh, <laughs> there, there were actually 36 distinct stories in the book when I was writing this thing. And it's all about the teams and, and people uh, that, that I participated with and some home related stories as well, because I'm getting in trouble at home all the time too. <laughs> okay, so you can tell me later who won. Uh, if we have a tie at 36 within the time frame, then I'll send out two books. So I don't, you know, I'm happy to send out stuff. We okay. will need your email and then eventually I'll email you and get your mailing address, okay? So we're going to move on to the next element. The next element is called visible evidence. So when we make a change, what we want to do is we want to make it so obvious that people can tell that people are following the, re the new procedure or the change from 20 feet away or more. I want to answer a question called, how do I know? So this can be in your home. This can be in your office. This can be in a nonprofit, a service organization, distribution center, factory. Can I see from 20 feet or more away that the person is doing something in the safest, most effective manner? How do I know that? How do they know? How do I know they're doing it in the right order? How do I know that everything's going well? How do I know that they do or don't need help? So if I was in the Toyota factory, the term and on a light, if the light's red, clearly people, we need help. If it's green, it's all good. We're, 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 we're hanging in there. Everything's going well. So I show a picture of a parking lot. You know, you drive your car into a parking lot at the mall and clearly from pretty far away, you can tell, yeah, I don't think I want to park there because that guy's too close to the line or took up two spaces. So you know very quickly. So the idea with the teams that I help, how do we make it visible? How do we make it visual? How do we make it so obvious that People know when it's time to help. 
Help is a very critical four letter word that, that we teach leaders that it isn't, what are you doing to solve the problem? It's how can I help you? What do you need? What can I do to help you solve the problem that you're facing right now? Okay, so in the end, what we wanna do is we wanna take that visible evidence to such a level that it's almost impossible to do the wrong thing. If I choose to do it wrong, it's gonna be so obvious that everybody's coworker, manager, leader, it doesn't matter, will say, hey, I see you're not doing, why would you do it wrong? That doesn't make sense. There's such a safer, easier way to do it. So make it impossible to do the wrong thing. Answer the question, how do I know? So with that, I'm gonna do a little demonstration and we can do it on the chat again, okay? So, well, I'm not gonna do the demonstration first. I'm gonna see if you have any questions then I'm gonna do a demonstration. So any questions about visible evidence? Um, we have a question that came in kind of like in between. So it's okay. instead of individual training, training group of leaders who manage different department can be useful. Could you share methods that we can use in this circumstance? Yeah, I mean, again, you've got to have clear expectations. It's good, you know, standard work is great, right? So if I'm I'm doing across several departments, we need to get leaders aligned around the right things to do and the way to do them properly, right? So you can start one-to-one -one with a small group to grow the ability to go one-to-one. -one. But again, what we're talking about, we're not just talking about sustaining things that are, you know, inconsequential. What we're talking about is sustaining changes that are potentially breakthrough or life-saving or, you know, or or industry shifting. So if that truly is the case, taking the time is the right investment, okay? So this is, you know, early I was talking about leadership commitment. This is a big test of leadership commitment. Are you willing, if this is worth this many dollars or this many lives or this level of service to customer, if you're not willing to take the time and make the effort, perhaps we shouldn't frustrate a team by having them try to solve this problem that we're not gonna support. Okay, so I know that sounds a little extreme and tough, but we're talking about sustainability here. So we don't shortcut sustainability. Um, so I'm pretty pretty uh, firm on that. Um, and so people have asked me sometimes, you know, have you walked away from, from work? And the answer is yes, because what we don't wanna do is frustrate teams. What we don't wanna do is create a losing experience. So teams are great, they're creative, they'll solve a problem. But if we don't have the leadership support as the foundation, the leadership commitment as a foundation, all we're gonna do is frustrate them and it's actually gonna make things worse in the long run. Okay. Any other questions that, on that or visible evidence? Nope, that was all. Okay, great. So I am going to move into the, now I think I'm moving into the demonstration because, you know, sometimes we forget. Okay, so the first question is, what is that? Type it in the chat, what is that? So just, if you see a couple, just shout them out to me, Skylar. Wrench. Yeah. Some sort of wrench. Some sort of wrench. Good, good. Okay. So the first question you say, you ask is, how do I know that's not a pitchfork, right? Because Adam's really not a great artist. Okay. So you're probably right. It's a wrench, but what wrench is it? Well, we, were, we don't really know that yet until we do this. Now, what key. is it? It's a key. Okay. Right. It could cool be. Could wrench. Have been. Yeah. So now what is it? It's a 916 wrench. Well, where did it come from? So it's sitting out in your workshop or in your factory or in your office. Where did that wrench come from? Where do you guys think? So answer that in the chat. Let's see how good you are. Where did the wrench come from? From the toolbox. We can't okay. tell. Okay. The answer is you don't know, right? Maintenance. So <laughs> for what's that for maintenance? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. All right. Now, now where did it come from? Okay. So just a little simple addition now tells us it came from this place called the weld shop. Well, okay. Where does it go? So I found it 
in the factory, where does it go? Okay, simple question, shouldn't be a hard answer, right? <laughs> what do they think, Skylar? You think they got this one? We've got weld shop, weld shop. Right, okay, great. So, but where, okay, so I knew you'd know that, but where in the weld shop? Well, the answer is you don't know yet. Okay. On the outline spot on the wall. Okay, are you sure? Tool are you aisle. Sure, are you sure that that's the out, that that outline is proper for the 9 16 inch wrench? Lost and found. Lost and found. All right, good, they're playing. Okay, so the answer is you don't know just yet. Remember that I wanna make it an almost impossible to do the wrong thing. So I need one more step because a lot of companies that I've visited stop with the outline and I say, nope, that's not good enough. Now that's, now it's good enough, okay? And there are hundreds of thousands of ways to do the exact same thing. But frankly, this way makes it almost impossible to do it wrong. And how do I know that? Because through much trial and error and much accountability that I've been held to, I've realized when somebody had me, I was using a six foot level that said weld shop level. And I got reminded four different times by people, two of which I didn't even know. Don't forget when you're done with that, you need to return that to the, the weld shop. Fantastic. That is sustainability. People that were not even on the team are holding me accountable to do the right thing. That's the type of visible evidence that you're looking for that drives sustainability and leadership commitment that allows us to not take any shortcuts and we can do it to the extreme, what I call the extreme, but my hope is there's even better ways than what I'm showing you. Okay, so I'm gonna move on because I see the time. I'm gonna take the questions off of that one because we're now on the fourth component, which is all tools available. So what this is saying now is the team only puts, you know, this is, this is actually a weld shop, by the way, probably the cleanest, nicest organized weld shop I've ever seen. We did this about three and a half years ago. It actually looks better than this now. But anyway, the whole point of this is, of all tools available, is everything you need is available, but not just available in a toolbox, right where you need it. So if I need it in four locations, if I needed that 9 16 wrench in four distinct locations, I'm going to hang four different 9 16 wrenches, one in each location logically located, I'm not allowed to search or transport, okay? The idea is, if it's that critical, you have it. And the leadership commitment side to this is that if I already have one, but I need three more, the answer is always yes. It can't be, how much does that cost? It has to be, the team has already self-managed their budget. So they know, if they're asking for those three more wrenches, they know that it's critical. Leadership has to believe that the team is already making the proper business decisions. So therefore the answer has to be yes. Okay, pretty simple. 5S is, the, is kind of the foundational thought of this, um, but it goes a little more than that to say that set in order is more than just set in order. This is all about optimizing to the work you're gonna do and the team gets to duplicate to make life safer and simpler. Okay, question block there. We're gonna have to take no more than two here, I think, just to manage the time a little bit. Sorry, I was muted. Um, this one says, why are the floors marked and not the walls? Right, so great question. Here's why. The team determined what would help them do their job in the best way and the markings that would help them do their job in the best way. So the answer is that we don't constrain the team to specific solutions. We're trying to solve a problem and what they're doing is they're deciding how it's going to best do it. What I'm doing is facilitating them with many ways to think about that. So they have the visible evidence that helps them do it the way they do it. And we ask questions, you know, so in some cases, the walls were, this, this particular wall was not, but the way they used the materials and supplies, this, this worked for them and they own it. So, and so that's the answer. 
no standardization except from their point of view. Okay, great question. Uh, that's the only one we have. Okay, we'll move on. Okay, so this fifth one, clear benefits, I love this one. My teams hate it. And I'm going to tell you why. So clear benefits means the team has been working on something and they're married to it. They have made life simpler, safer, and less stressful. Here's what's going to happen. About day one, early in, not early in, when they start, start forming their first ideas of change, I make them go talk to people that aren't on the team. Here's what we're thinking. Well, most human nature would be to be quite negative first. Hope for the best, but assume the worst. So I make my team members go out in Gemba and talk to people that aren't on the team. And sometimes they get an earful. Sometimes people aren't so happy about it. Sometimes they're not even listening. They're yelling. Well, you're not listening to me. Well, yeah, you're yelling at me. How could I? Uh, but what we're trying to do is say, look, in the room, anything can look like an elegant solution. What? But these, are, these folks weren't part of the solution but they're gonna to have to implement it with you. So let's find out what they really think because you're gonna be dealing with that anyway. So we go out on day one, day two, day three, however many days, and we're continuously getting feedback. The first time they go out, they're a little tentative. And some of the stories and adventures, sometimes I'm the referee, but what really happens is you're finding out the, re the realistic option, the realistic situation, how we're gonna to have to deal with the organization who's going to have to be part of this be part of the implementation but it also gives them a chance to get extra input we're getting feedback we're valuing people's interests and beliefs and thoughts but in the end it's all about if i see a clear benefit if it helps me personally i'm going to do it if i don't think it helps me personally if i don't see that it helps me personally i probably won't do it so what we're trying to find out is, will that person who's never seen what we're thinking of on first blush feel like, hey, I think that's going to be better. So is it any wonder that some of my team members are a little tentative the first time they go out and talk to their friends and neighbors? Okay, questions on that one? This, this, one's, any this one's pretty challenging. On, Go ahead. I don't have any so far on this one. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep moving. Keep moving. I, I will tell you that those that have worked with me and they, they come to me on day one, they go, you're going to send us back out in Gemba to talk to the folks, aren't we? I said, of course I am. Why wouldn't I? And they give me that look and they say, well, that's good because I already told them we're going to be coming out. So that's good. Once they start doing that, that's sustainability, okay? You're creating that momentum that says, we're going to listen to you. So start giving us your input even before we start. Okay. Layered audits. So this, this feels paperworkish, but let's be honest. You go out and you want to see if things are working and healthy, right? So you can either engage, which is the way I encourage, or you could do it from afar. So what I encourage is two-way learning. Let's go see if things are going as they should, right? But let's do it with the person that we're auditing. Let's learn together. Let's also create an audit that takes less than five minutes because anybody can give us five minutes in their day. It can't be an hour, it's gotta be five minutes. It means you can't audit everything, right? So I'm showing a 5S audit. A good 5S audit takes less than five minutes, but it can be very impactful and powerful. Now. What also happens when we're doing audits? So the person doing the work audits their work. The person managing the person doing the work audits the work at a lower frequency. And as you go up the levels to the top leadership, you know, they're doing it with less and less frequency. What we're doing is we're, we're reinforcing the importance of this change, the importance of this improvement, the importance of the policy, whatever it is, because we're engaging. And anybody should be able to audit. The audit has to be simple because anybody should be an auditor. And if they see something that doesn't look right, they're supposed to engage. They're not just supposed to mark you down with a low score. Engage, try to understand, see where you can help. There's that four letter word help again um, and be part of the solution. So again, leadership commitment, critical. If the plant manager or the office manager doesn't wanna participate in this, 
well, that's a clear loss of leadership commitment. So you have to be willing, but we can't give them an audit that takes an hour. We have to give them some kind of form of, you know, highest priority items. You can be random, but three to five minutes, no more than that. Okay. Questions on this? None so far. Okay, we'll keep going then. So, oh, look, fabulous prize opportunity. Okay, so another chance to win the book, yay. Obviously I ordered too many, I need to send some out. Just kidding. Um, okay, so in the chat, uh, I did a free Kindle download uh, week a few weeks ago. I never told anybody how many people actually took advantage, how many downloads actually happened for free. So in the chat, throw in, a, throw in your number and whoever gets closest wins a signed copy. I'll mail it to you. I'll, I'll need to you know get your mailing address. So if you want to win, you'll have to give me your mailing address, but I promise I won't send too much junk mail, just a book. Okay, so we'll give that about 10 more seconds because we're bumping up against time a little bit. Okay. Okay, so Skylar, the answer to that one is 212. So who's ever closest to that, you can share that with me later. Okay, 212. Woohoo! Yeah, there you go. So hopefully somebody got it. If there's a tie winner, I'll send out two books. Okay. And it's not the price is right. You're allowed to go over. Okay. <laughs> all right. The next element is called accountability. So this is all about We've made a change. We see somebody not following the change. How do we engage? How do we react? So the way I think about this, my analogy is if you have a small child who's about to put his or her hand on a hot stove, you would stop that immediately. You would keep that person from harm, that child from harm. You would try to keep the tears from flowing, but you want to keep that hand from burning. If I'm in a factory, if somebody is not doing lockout, we wanna keep that person from harm. We wouldn't walk by that behavior. So if we've made a critical change that's so important to the business, to our customers, to our people, immediately correct the behavior. So let's go back to the tell, show, do. We've taught people the right way to do something. They choose not to. What are you gonna do? You're going to a meeting, you're about to be late, but you see out of the corner of your eye, it looks like somebody's not following the standard work and no one else is around. You have to divert yourself to that person and immediately engage now in a helping way, not an abusive way, not what the heck are you doing? Hey, are you aware of this new change? Are you aware that this is the safest, best way to do something? Do you know that we all have agreed to do it this way? What can I do to help ensure that you do this correctly every single time, that it's not okay to do it wrong? So you have to be able to engage. You must be willing to. Because if you walk by, what you've said is, it's okay to do it wrong. So by engaging, you show that you care. So caring is a big part of this. Tell, show, and do one-on-one, -on -one, that takes a lot of caring to take the amount of time. Auditing with a person demonstrates caring. Providing help demonstrates caring. But in total, it demonstrates leadership commitment. That's my image of accountability. Accountability is easy until you have to do it, until you know you're going to be late for a meeting and you got some splaining to do. So critical stuff, though, really important. Okay, any questions about accountability? We're bumping up against time, but I have one element left. Nothing. Nothing? They just want it to end? That's great. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Last element from my mind is a term I use called recognition. Now this is about recognizing cause and effect, telling stories, something awesome happened. We're telling the story of it and people seem to relate to stories. So like I said, I told 36 stories in the book. Every time I wrote those stories, it reminded me of something really cool or a little challenging that happened, or I almost got fired in one of them. Um, but it reminds us of what happened and why it mattered and what was going on and just how people engage. So people, if you can connect those stories to results, it, 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 bring, it keeps that change alive and sustains it. The, the most wonderful thing is when somebody tells a story of a change that made an improvement and they weren't even involved in the change,
but they heard about it and they saw it and they were so impressed by it that they're telling others as if they did it. That is when you win. That's what winning looks like. It locks in the commitment of the organization. It locks in the commitment of the person. You're grabbing hearts and minds, but recognize. Now, you could also give prizes and awards. I don't really call that. I know we call that recognition. And I, you know, I love giving away stuff because they're reminders. They're reminders of when something great happened or something good, or somebody just made an amazing discovery or just tried their hardest those things really resonate with people. And it, it resonated with me, and I hope that it, it will resonate with you. But when we're telling those stories, when leaders hear and promote those stories, that's the commitment that helps kind of seal the deal around the sustainability wheel. Okay, any questions on that? That is the last element. A, a bunch of you have hung in there. Appreciate that. We're about two, I got about two minutes left. So hang in there if you can. Any questions, Skylar? We don't have any questions on that, but we do have a, if they can get a copy of your 5S audit sheet. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can send me. So there's gonna be some contact information. You can send me email. Uh, it's, it's a pretty industry standard one, but I'm happy to send it to you just to make your life a little easier. Happy to do mm -hmm. it, so yep. Those emails, put it in the chat. I think we're, we're able to record the whole chat, right, Skylar? Yes. Okay, awesome. So if you guys do that, if you want it, just put it in the chat that you want it in your email. And is there a frequency to the recognition? Oh, every single minute of every single day. Tell those stories. Thank people for doing a great job. Show off some of the awesome improvements that your teams have made. Go audit something and, and recognize when something looks a little better than it did before. Yes, make any minute a recognition minute if you can. And it's fun. Um, you know, if you're not used to doing it, it's a little difficult to begin with, but just have some fun with it. If you see something that looks good, just, just thank the person for doing a great job. That's recognition too. And they'll and understand why. Explain that, wow, since you guys 5S this area it seems like everything is so much nicer for the people that work here. Is that correct? Yeah, well, thank you for doing that. I mean, that's recognition right there. Great question. Every minute of every day. Okay, let me finish up. So, you know, what could I tell you? I wrote this book, right? So why did I write a book? I wrote a book because there's so much more I wanna tell you about it that I can't do in 45 minutes, right? Um, and I, it was in me and, and I had some time on my hands. A lot of us who don't have a, a job that they go to every single day, I'm a consultant. Um, we had some time because a lot of our clients were shutting down their ability to come for people to come from the outside. This was always in me and I wanted to share it with more people. So that's what I did. But in it, each chapter is, a, is an element of the wheel and clearly love to talk more about it with you guys. Um, so with that, I'm going to give you one more extra credit opportunity. I don't know if you can see this. I have these little ninjas. I don't know. Can they see that? Yeah. Anyway, I've got these little ninjas squeeze toys. So I did some book promotion. I don't know much about promoting books, but um, my little puppy dog that we just got, she, she was helping promote the book. So if you guys can figure out her name, you and a little squeeze toy ninja. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if any of you were paying attention to it, but type it in the chat. And as many of you get her name, I'm sending out ninjas. Okay. So I know that's kind of silly, but that's just the way I am. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm loving these answers. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's good. I'm not giving the answer because I'll, I know the answer. <laughs> so we'll, we'll figure that out afterwards. And then we'll, again, if we've got your emails, we'll make sure that we get them sent out to you. All right. The last is just to thank you all for participating. I really appreciate it. I want to thank Lean Frontiers and certainly Skylar for, for being my partner in crime today. Uh, what I would say to you is that, you know, I love doing this stuff and I want to keep talking to you guys following this. So here's some contact details. Find me on LinkedIn. I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm not much, I'm not much of a Facebooker. So more LinkedIn. I've got a Google business page for process improvement partners. And just again, thank you all for hanging in there. Thanks for participating. 
and I can't wait to send some books and ninjas out. <laughs> so I'm going to get off the share. And once again, thanks so much, Skylar. And thank, thank you, you all Adam. for participating. That was fun. That was no. great. Thank you so much to everybody who participated today and yeah. in your questions. And also give us 24 to 48 hours. You can get a little ninja guy. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a book. <laughs> to view the recording. Um, and I will make sure that he gets all of the information from the chat today to send y'all a book and your ninjas. Very cool. Fun. Thanks, Have everyone. a great day. All right. Take care. Bye, Adam. Thank you. Bye.